So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back. Listen, I shouldn't have really did that, bro. I am full. I just had me a nice little snack. I guess you could call that a snack. I had some chicken fingers and fries, man. So you might see a few little crumbs in my beard. So what? Crumbs in my beard. It's all right. You know what I mean? But anyway, man, after eating a good meal, you know what time it is, my guy. We back with Mr. Grady. Judd put some respect on his name. Put some respect on his name, man. Now, the next video we got for him is uh, Sheriff Grady Judd says teens will be charged as adult in death of Pope City librarian. Oh, man. Like, you don't hear that too often. The death of a librarian, bro? Like, huh? I don't even go together. You know what I mean? So, let's get to it, man. Let's... Let's let Sheriff hit the podium real quick. Grady Judd, let's listen in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with me today as we update you on a horrific event that happened on November the 9th. First off, I want to introduce you to Suzette Penton. She has two sons. One of them's named Hunter. By the way, condolences, first and foremost, of course, we always got to be respectful. Condolences. Hey, we're only using their names because they gave us permission. That's the only way we can use their names because of the new Marcy's Law. But Suzette is the librarian for the city of Polk City. For those of you who aren't from this area, Polk City is a community of about 1,500 people. It's quaint, it's quiet, it's almost crime free. It's a wonderful community. And Suzette Penton helped make it a wonderful community with the work she did with the children at the library. She always went above and beyond. You can see here, and if you go on the Facebook pages, her different faces as she would dress up and paint up as she had programs for the young children in and around Polk City. She was known and loved by the people of Polk City. She was also known as a protective mother. And here's what, a ha what happened on November 9th. She left with her youngest son to run to the store for a few minutes. Little did she realize at that moment in time that directly across the street in a park, there were four people in a van. They were there waiting to go beat up Hunter. Now you say, why did all that occur? Well, here's what, a, what the rendition is as we understand at this point in the investigation. Kimberly Stone, who was 15 on that day, by the way, she turned 16 while locked up in juvenile detention. That was our birthday present to her. She got to serve it locked up. Yo, Grady. Yo, Grady. Sheriff Grady, yo. That was our birthday present to her. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's my guy right here, bro. Was the ex-girlfriend to Hunter Penton. They hadn't dated for about six months. Her new boyfriend is Elijah Stansel. He's 18 years of age. Well, Kimberly and had been communicating back and forth online with Hunter and with other people, and also having, I would call it, a post-dating disagreement, ongoing disagreement, where they were yeah yeah and, and threatening and, and talked and trashed each other. It was so bad that the school system had warned Kimberly and in fact on that very day the ninth had brought her in and suspended her from school which was to start the next day for her outrageous conduct. So she and some of her rants and arguing back and forth in person and on social media 
just said, well, I'll get my boyfriend and we'll come beat you up. So after school, that very day that she was, sus to, she was suspended and it was to start like the next day, she gets with her best friend, Hannah Eubank, and another fr friend by the name of Raven Sutton. Hannah's 14 and Raven's 16. And then they get with Elijah, and Elijah drives a van up to Hunter Penton's house, Suzette's son. Understand that Elijah didn't even know where Hunter lived. Kimberly had to direct them to the Polk City house. Now, my interest. So he didn't even have nothing to do with it. This is a discord between exes, right? Exes. He had nothing to do with it. Now he's involved in an actual murder and had nothing to even do with the whole beginning of this whole situation or beef or whatever you want to classify it as. And again, mind y'all, these are 16 year olds, man. So if you have a 16 year old or somebody around that age, your child, and you don't think this type of stuff can turn crazy? Think again, bro. Interest you to know that the vet take it serious. Let's back up to the Polk City House. Now it might interest you to know that the van that he was driving, that he had permission to use and apparently used frequently, belonged to the Westwood Missionary Baptist Church, where his father was not the lead pastor but was one of the pastors at the church. So they all pile in the church van from Westward. That's important information to know because that lets you know or give you kind of what his possible upbringing was. You know what I'm saying? So now you're, you're the son of a, a pastor and this is what you out here doing? Missionary Baptist and they go and they're actually parked across the street and watch Suzette leave to go to the store. We have a video clip for you to see that really tells the rest of the story. They go up to the front door, being Elijah, Raven, and Hannah. The instigator of all this stays in the van. Kimberly stays inside the van. They knock on the front door well, at the Penton house, their main, main ingress and egress is the side door, so Hunter comes out the side door to see what's happening. Hunter has no idea that they're coming up there to fight him. When he comes out the side door, Elijah immediately confronts him in the carport and starts beating him up where a fight ensues. We see that Hunter tried to, or either was forced into, back into the house as a result of the fight. Elijah in, is fighting with Hunter. Raven gets a couple of shots in during the fight, the best we can tell with the pieces of video we have. And Hannah is taking photographs or video in this. About Because everything has to be video so you can yell world star you can put it up on social media or snapchat for all the world to look at that's that's what gets people right there that because that's the only reason they doing it that time unexpectedly suzette comes back she arrives when she comes back we see that our ringleader here, along with the other two, just kind of hurry off back to... I'm sorry, but doesn't that look like a dude? That looks like a dude standing there. The, him is fighting with the son, and I thought it was supposed to be a girl. Hold on, let me look back. You got the picture. Okay, so that is a dude. Okay, that, I thought that was a female. I didn't listen to the names really good. My bad. Let's go back now. Because <laughs> I was about to say, bro, threw me off. Y'all looking at them pictures, it looked like three chicks and a dude, right? That might be two dudes, two chicks. I, I didn't listen to the names, so hopefully he go back through the names again. Time unexpectedly, Suzette comes back. 
she arrives. When she comes back, we see that our ringleader here, along with the other two, just kind of hurry off back to their van. Suzette actually sees the fight. She gets out and goes to the van in her car. Suzette is trying to take photographs of the getaway van. Elijah stands still. Elijah stands still. Runs over her. Completely over her. She has tire tracks on her body where he runs totally over her. As we speak today, Detective Fulcher from our homicide team is on his way to the South County Jail where he's still locked up to charge him with murder. Interestingly enough, the three juveniles have been waved over by the state attorney's office from juvenile court to adult court. They are still locked up in juvenile detention, but are now facing adult charges of attempted murder that were originally filed, and as well as there was a burglary to an occupied residence and a battery. All of those are serious felonies. They now have a bond. So under the juvenile system, they would have had to have been released at 21 days, or they would have had to negotiate a, a program. Our team has been working hand in glove with the state attorney's office. The state attorney, Brian Haas, and I have talked, and we're all exceptionally upset for a lot of reasons. What started out as a bunch of kids going to go up there and be a thug, going to be a tough person, going to beat up a guy over because he used to date Kimberly, turned into a murder. A murder. He controlled and could have stopped the murder. But he's the one, he's the driver that in the church van ran over. Ah, just hearing that is eerie. In the church van. In the church van. Now, what's even more crazy is take take them out, put yourselves in those situations, right? How many of us got into fights when we were kids? Plenty of them, right? Plenty of them. Did you ever think about a fight turning deadly? We didn't think that way. All of our fights could have turned deadly. Right? You could have been hitting somebody, you hit them, they slip, fall on something, die. You know, you could have picked somebody up and slammed them on the ground, slammed them on something that impaled them, die. Did, did you ever think about that? We didn't. You know what I'm saying? Take yourself and put yourself in their shoes. That could have easily been. Or you could have been along to see a fight. Dumb kid, me, going to see a fight could have easily been implicated in the whole thing and now been facing attempted murder charges when you were just there to watch or be a part of it or you jump somebody or, you know what I'm saying? Like, keep it real. One thing Grady Judd does is keep it real, so I'm going to keep it real. That could have been any one of us. So that's why, that's why I stress the, the importance of man just be into what your kids is into, bro, and try your best, bro. Try your best, man, because they don't understand. They're in the same positions we were as a kid when we didn't understand. They don't understand how fast this thing can go from innocent to deadly. You know what I mean? It, how you can go from innocent kid to facing murder charges, being tried as an adult. And killed this beautiful lady who is so well thought of and the city librarian. This was witnessed by a lot of people. 
One of them worked for county utilities. He did what the people of Polk County are expected to do. He followed the suspect vehicle, the van, south on Berkeley Road, and called 911 and, um, and continued to follow the van and give updates until the Auburndale Police Department and the Sheriff's Office could intercept the vehicle as it was traveling southbound into Auburndale. I need to point out that this, that this, these folks went to Auburndale High School and one of them actually went to another school, uh, an academy. But Kimberly went to Auburndale High School, Hannah went to Auburndale High School, and I believe uh, Raven went to Stepping Stone Academy. What's interesting? Okay, so it's Raven. So is that a that's a thing? I am still confused about who he or she is, bro. No, and I'm not trying to be funny or nothing like that. I'm serious. But standing in the doorway, somebody looked at like they were a dude. Go back and look. I ain't going to take it back, but go back and look, bro. I was like, yo. Interesting about this. With the exception of Hannah Eubanks, which has a really bad attitude, she was arrested once in October or charged criminally in the juvenile system for giving false identification to the law enforcement. But other than that, none of them have any criminal history. Zero. So they went from being rowdy, out of control juveniles on this day to Elijah's charge with murder. And certainly we've got attempted murder charges still in place, as well as burglary to an occupied residence and battery, which are F1s. It should have never happened. It's one more example for us to tell our children, when you misbehave, it can get out of hand. There's going to be a celebration of life for Suzette on November the 6th at the Bronson Community Center in Polk City at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The community wanted us to put out that everyone's welcome to attend. And that's important because it's a small, tight-knit community where Suzette was a very important part of developing the young children in the community. You see, she taught people right from wrong. She taught people how to do things the right way. So at the end of the day, the case is still under investigation. There's still a lot of follow-up to go. We've not downloaded all of the data off of the cell phones and all of the camera videos. We have been working diligently to put this together with the state attorney's office, and we will update you. But at this time, only Elijah is charged with the actual murder because he is the one that was driving the vehicle and he is the one that ran over and feloniously murdered a lady that was doing nothing but trying to gather photographs of suspects who attacked her child at their home in this quaint, safe little community. Any questions? Did he have his own set of keys to that van, or did he like swipe them from his father? Oh, he had permission to use the van, is our understanding. Now, why in the world his father gave his son permission to use this van, I don't know. But it was a van that was traditionally used for maintenance. I'm told it was not necessarily a Sunday transportation van, but one that was used for maintenance. But he according to the information that we've developed this far in the investigation this kid was given permission to drive this vehicle keep in mind he has no criminal history he doesn't work but i tell you, tell you something when kimberly at the time a 15 year old girl told him get in your van and go my ex-boyfriend he did it Where do you have them
part of a youth group or you just happen to be a pastor or something? Not that we're aware of. Not that, not that we're Typical. And, and, and we can't say that's out of the norm because we've seen it happen a thousand times. The new boyfriend feels like he get his stripes. He feel like he's sticking up for his girl. He figures that's what he's supposed to do. He's thinking that in his mind. I'm supposed to go beat this dude up because him and my girl is having this back and forth and I ain't having that. You know what I mean? Clearly, he had nothing to do with anything. That's what I'm tripping about. He had nothing to do with none of it. And now he's in a murder beat. He's facing murder. And he had nothing to do with it. That's crazy. I know that's the only thing. He's sitting there in a cell or in wherever he's sitting at. And they have him in holding. Or probably by now he's probably been charged and prosecuted. But I know he's sitting there thinking that, fam. Like, how did I allow somebody else to get me here? Me here. Like, it's literally like somebody put the battery in your back and charged you up and said, go. We're aware of. But they were all friends. The investigation goes on. Now, keep in mind, just last week, we had an 18-year-old and a 17-year-old shoot and murder a person out in, point in the uh, out in the far east side of the county over a drug deal we're not talking about seasoned criminals in either of these events come on at 18 years of age 17 years of age you're shooting into a car and killing people at 18 years of age you're running over a mama, a city librarian who's doing nothing but trying to take photographs and so she can later identify who came into her house and to beat up her son. Sure, if you look at the video, you can see clearly that he had the opportunity to back up, to drive around her, or not to 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 hit the gas and run over her. He didn't clip her. He didn't try to turn away from her and accidentally hit her and she fell down. She was squared up and he ran over her, directly over her, rolled her underneath the van. But he wasn't trying to shoo her away. He was locked in on her. He ran directly over her and you'll see that in the video that, that we put up here or that you, you may you may have had it from the original think about it bro you just got in a brawl like i say bro you just got in a fight right you just what is going your adrenaline is is everywhere it's, it's pumping it's it's going now you storm back out to the van you hop in the van still all pissed off breathing hard you just was in a fight so you might have thought in your mind I'm going to just nut, push her out the way with the vehicle and drive off. Just nut, move her out the way. But no, you ran smack over. Or you did it intentionally and you just said, oh, she's in the way. I'm going to run right over her too. Of that, but we will release it again. Also, I tell you, once again, we're able to give these names because the family wanted us to and allowed us to. Otherwise, we couldn't. Because the family... And the friends want the community to know how horrific this is. What a senseless tragedy it was for him to run over this lady and kill her. So how many times have you seen an incident that's so petty turn so bad? It usually when you have murders, you have drug deals gone bad. You have relationship fights you have long-standing feuds you have horrible criminal conduct robberies you don't see that they all went up there to have a teenage fight and it turned to murder 
And there's no doubt in anybody's mind, when you see that video, he had every opportunity in the world not to run over this lady. But he didn't. He chose to take the church van, which was intended for good, and used it for evil. And he needs to go to prison. You see, Suzette didn't get to be with her family on Thanksgiving. She didn't get to share the joy of being with her children on Thanksgiving Day. Who are now without a mom, by the way. Think about that. And I have yet to hear a dad being in the picture. So if there's no dad... She'll never have the opportunity again to teach wonderful young children in the Polk City area right from wrong and how to improve their lives. She'll never have that opportunity because of him and because Kimberly wanted him to go up there and beat up Hunter. Evil. The driver made admissions and said, I didn't know I, run over, I ran over her. I didn't know. Well, come on, man. If you're going to admit, don't. Well, maybe I clipped her with a mirror, stuff like that. But he was the most concerned of the bunch. Hannah, when we we're talking to her, one of the detectives said, do you realize that this lady may die? Hannah looked at the detective and said, I've already been told that. I don't want to hear that anymore. She was very flippant. But ladies and gentlemen, you can be sure of one thing. We're going to see that the criminal justice system holds them accountable. Because whatever they meant when they started, he ended it with murder. And Suzette won't be there when her children get married. She won't ever get to see her grandchildren. And they won't have their mother. And it never should have happened. And the school was trying to intervene and stop the conduct. And Kimberly Stone continued with her conduct to the point that the school suspended her for it. And remember, she never got out the van. <laughs> there you go. You know what we know. And the investigation goes on. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bro, I'm starting to like, like I think you guys should, and, and you do what you want with it, you know. I think these are videos that you should, this video here is something you should sit down. If you have children, if you have, I'm gonna sit down with my sons and watch it again. If you have teenagers, preteens, any, any of your children, sit down. Because this shows them how a fight can turn deadly, bro. You know what I'm saying? It shows how things can go left very quickly. It shows every aspect and angle in this one video, how you could be the, the person that's involved in the fight or how you could be the tag along person that's just there and still end up with some heavy charges. So don't think just because, oh, I was there because that used to be the cop out for, for all of us. Oh, well, I was just there. I was just there. And your parents would say to you, you're just as guilty, but it would never register in our mind. Now that we're older and we see it, we try to relay that same message to our children. So showing them this video may help, may not help, but at least you you made that valiant attempt, bro, to say, listen, bro, even if you're there, you're just as in the wrong. This is sad, bro. This is so sad. Sad that kid will, will never see his mom again. And he's probably beating himself up about it, thinking that I, 
if I maybe if I didn't go back and forth with her, we would have never got to this point. You know, even though it still shouldn't have happened, but he'll beat himself up for the rest of his life thinking he got himself into that situation, which got his mom killed. Yeah, man, definitely, man. If you get the opportunity or if you feel like it, sit down with your children and watch this video, man. Very, very, very important style video. So share it. Share it as much as you can. It's your boy L, man. I'm gone. Next video, I'm out. Peace. Y'all stay solid. Hey.